first of all, let's talk about how alcohol is even produced. Alcohol is liquid solar energy. So let me explain to me how we get there. Alcohol is a product of carbohydrates. Now carbohydrates, carbon, and hydrate is water. So we, we make carbohydrates, which typically are sugar in plants, starch, and cellulose. Those are all carbohydrates. Now, to make a carbohydrate, what a plant does with photosynthesis is it takes carbon dioxide from the air, water, and through photosynthesis, using the energy from sunlight, combines those two to make sugars, starches, and cellulose. It always makes sugar first. All three of these carbohydrates start off as sugar. Starch is a chain of six sugars together. And cellulose are many chains wound together in crystals. So cellulose, you know, because of this wonderful you know, fibrous structure, are the basic plant material that holds plants up. But, uh, and so, you know, so it's also very resistant to decomposition in general, except for you know, bacteria and funguses that break it down. And you know, those of us, for instance, who would like to get food value out of cellulose would find that that fiber is really good for a lot of things in our health, but not for energy, because we don't digest cellulose. We don't have the enzymes to break apart those crystalline chains, but we do have the enzymes to break down starch. Um, in fact, we have one of the main enzymes right in our saliva. If you take a saltine cracker and you chew it for a while, and you just keep chewing it and keep chewing it, you'll all of a sudden notice it'll get sweeter and sweeter and sweeter as the starch breaks down into sugar. So in making alcohol from grains or starchy materials like potatoes, potatoes of course are made into vodka, um, starch is broken down using enzymes into sugar, and then we go ahead and feed the sugar to yeast, the same yeast that make wine or beer, basically. Now, what the, the yeast do is they take that sugar, they absorb it, digest it, and they produce alcohol as basically yeast piss. You know, it's an excrement of, from the yeast. And they breathe out because yeast are not exactly animals, but they uh, have a metabolism um, which allows them to take in um, the sugar and they breathe out carbon dioxide. So half the sugar that yeast eat becomes CO2 and half becomes alcohol. Now these are the same yeast that make bread. So the whole process of making bread rise is taking advantage of the carbon dioxide side of yeast metabolism. The carbon dioxide they breathe out make the bubbles that make bread rise. Now of course half the sugar in bread also turns into alcohol. So when you cook the bread, the alcohol is driven off. And in Sweden, all bakeries have to have a condenser on the top of the oven flues to recapture the alcohol, where they then use it in the gasoline. So can you start saying, why put the alcohol in the air where it's a pollutant? You know, I mean, you know, it's, it's an organic chemical. I mean, although it's not severely toxic, you know, since we can drink it and, you know, get away with that pretty well. Um, you know, it is, it is something you don't necessarily want to add to the air, and it's a valuable product to recover. So in Sweden, it's all recovered and put into the fuel. So we, we've been using yeast a long time as human beings to make different things for us. And so alcohol is one of them. So the process is basically making a funky wine, which we then you know, distill into a funky whiskey, which we then put in our cars. Typically, alcohol should be about 80% pure pure minimum, although it's much less technical problems if it's at least 90% pure. And it's, it's possible to make alcohol completely pure or 200 proof with a couple of steps. So alcohol is, um, so when we go ahead and burn it in the car,